Hey, my name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And today, I'm gonna teach you how to break into the coconut. Coconut, this, this is The Art of Repair. You're not a cooking channel. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the coconut. I'm talking about that one thing that holds everybody back from getting started with their board level repair. We're talking about EMI shields. So what are EMI shields for the for those of you that don't know just yet? Uh, an EMI shield, if we take a look here, I'm gonna hold it up, is a big metal shield. It it you know it's not always covering the entire thing. Sometimes you'll find them in you know random spots here, you know, that's actually supposed to have one down here at the bottom. There looks like there's one all across the back here. You know, we can pop up a little Samsung board here. Look at that. Everybody uses them. What are they? Why are they even there? To find out what they are and why they're even there, we need to, you know, kind of step back here and break it down. That's something I really like to do. I like to break things down. That way I can understand what they actually are. Because, you know, there's a lot of times when you're talking to a customer, you're like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 it's sitting under the EMI shield, this, that, and the other. But do you know what you're talking about? Do you know what that stands for? EMI. It stands for Electromagnetic Interference Shield. So it's an EMI shield. It's protecting from electromagnetic interference. What? Okay, I, I get that. That's all around us. You know, that can definitely affect a chip. I mean, you know, you get too much of that in an area and you know you might you might lose some functionality. You might you might see some issues cropping up. Okay. But there's another another source of EMI that these are there to protect from. From the battery. You know, battery noise can definitely be a you know a major issue in terms of, you know, things working appropriately if it's if it's you know a little bit more than normal so you know these EMI shields are really important on top of that they give you structural integrity okay these phones they, pretty much all mobile devices are with people that's the whole point everything's portable now it's all mobile that's why we call it mobile electronics repair people take them with them okay and with that they're you know subjugated to pretty much all the different you know types of you know crap that we can do to a device I mean they go in your pocket they get set on they get thrown they get run over there's got to be some kind of protection in there so there you go EMI shields they protect the board from electromagnetic interference and they give the board stability now that's cool Justin but you told me that we were getting into one today like we were taking one off and right now you're just telling me about it so if you could just you know real quick I'm, I'm literally here with a customer if you could I just got to take it off so I can get in there and you know fix the backlight <laughs> anyway with no further ado we're gonna jump in here and I'm gonna show you not one but two different types of EMI shield removals actually we might even get a third one in there yeah let's go ahead and see if we can get a third one in there but before we do that let's let's take a look at the different types real fast I'm gonna jump on over here to the microscope all right, so like I was saying, there's multiple different types of EMI shields and multiple different ways for them to be taken off. But once I show you, you're going to be like, oh, Justin, you know, you're making that seem like it was way more drawn out and, you know, complicated than it need to be. Well, that's because that's the point. Everybody thinks it is, but it's really not. It's really easy. So check this out. We're going to jump over here and take a look at the Samsung for just a second. Actually, let's see where the point's at on this one. There we go. All right. With this board alone, I can show you both different types. We can see right here on this side that we've got a continuous piece of metal that gets soldered to the board. Well, duh, Justin, that's why I'm here. You're supposed to tell me how to take that off. Okay, well, take a look at the other side there. It's got these little rivets in it. Hmm. What's going on there? Let's kind of poke at it a little bit. Could that be another type of connection for an EMI? Might be. What's going on here? It, it's coming off. I didn't. I didn't use a hot air station or nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, what the crap? It's just coming right off. You see that? There we go. Look at that. I just peeled it right off. So the first thing you need to do is you need to take a look and see what you're actually dealing with. You might come to find out that the type of EMI shield you're trying to take off is one that 
was kind of meant to be taken off without any kind of special machinery. You know, we most people don't look at that stuff though, they just assume, okay? So easy enough, you know, we did that without any kind of equipment, but what about the other one? The one that you know isn't coming off, you know, the one that's soldered down? Okay, we can do that too. Let's jump over here and let's take a look at the side cam because we've seen both types now. All right, so this one seems fun. It's, it's a huge one. It pretty much takes up the entire board here. And I'll go ahead and tell you, it looks like that first one I showed you on the Samsung where it's completely soldered to the actual you know, board itself. First thing we want to do, and this is, this is kind of one of those things that you want to check on anyway, especially if you're about to apply heat to a board. Check and see if there's no antennas, okay? Make sure you make sure you take these off because you know you could you could definitely find yourself in a world of trouble if you end up messing those up and you don't have an extra one. So we're gonna carefully just take that off real fast. And we're gonna go ahead and go over this. Okay. So we see it right there. And yes, we are gonna be using heat. You're definitely gonna need a heat gun for this. Um, I like to kind of set mine to the, the maximum setting. So I've got the quick 861DW here. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to 500 degrees centigrade at 120 airflow. I think that's uh, like 20 liters a minute or something like that. So super fast, as much as possible, okay? And let's look at the anatomy for a second here. And we can see that not only is it gonna be connected on the edges, but if we come up here, we can also see that it's kind of soldered down here as well. So, you know, this isn't just something that's, you know, just on the edges. We've got to make sure we pay attention to that stuff. Let's go ahead and take it off. So we're at 500, which is our maximum heat at our maximum airflow, which is 120 on this specific machine. And here's where it gets interesting. Okay, this is where people diverge. This is where people have issues. They don't know how to take it off. I'm gonna take my pair of tweezers here, and there's two ways to do this, okay? So we already saw the first one where we're, we're just peeling it off because it's just on there with retention clips. Now we're at number two. Number two, you can take a piece of silicone. You can take your steel block if you got one. If not, you can use your, you know, your Omnivice or whatever, you know, crazy PCB contraption you have there. Just something to hold it still, okay? And you can heat it up. You can heat it up evenly across the whole thing. You can just take your hot air up and down a little bit and then make sure you kind of go around the edges and as you're holding it'll just kind of come up. And you're probably wondering, Justin, why are you telling me, why aren't you showing me? Well, I'm not showing you because I'm about to show you a really cool way to do this, okay? You don't even need this big block. You don't need none of that. You don't need this right here, okay? All you need is gravity, okay? Because gravity is gonna do the job for you. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab it right here in the corner, and you can find an access point. It's, it's not hard, okay? We're gonna take our hot air, and remember what I was saying a second ago, we're just gonna heat up the middle a little bit, just kind of saturate the thermal mass there, and then we're gonna work our way around the body. As we work our way around the body, the weight of the board itself is gonna start to pull the board down. Oh, and you can hear the cracking, look at this, here it comes. gravity ladies and gentlemen and that's why I didn't show you how to do it with the metal because it's way more fun to do it this way so now I've given you three ways to do it and we've kind of explained what's going on here we've kind of gone over the two different types I think you might be ready to take one off yourself so go ahead and grab your hot air grab yourself a practice board and let me know how it goes for you down below in the comment section don't forget guys if you're interested in any of the tools I use check out the description below I even have my own custom tools that I sell down there as well that literally do not exist anywhere else on the planet except from the art of repair. I also have a Patreon where you can help support the channel so I can create even better high quality content.